All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New Age Viewcast on YouTube. Here we go. We are um, reviewing a well-respected man. The next episode of Defiance. And um, Landon is not with me right now. This is a two-part um, video because we needed to <laughs> check all the sound before we recorded an hour and a half. So we recorded an hour and a half. I was putting it together, I was checking out everything, and I couldn't hear a damn word he said because I because I wanted to play with my friends. I didn't I didn't do work and I was playing around, so I took the uh, voice off of the TV, which is crucial to hear Landon. And uh, so yeah, an hour and a half down the drain, but we will bring Landon in a little later. We are just going to straight review this some B the way I would review it if I were alone, and then we'll get his thoughts on it later, along with all the comments, uh, emails, Twitter, all that fun stuff, um, question of the week, all that'll come later. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's get right into the episode. It started out with these two Castathan pals, um, drug dealing, you can see him, him shaking the hand of, uh, looks like a human there, um, getting money for drugs. And, uh, you know, they're, they're living the high life right now. Uh, it says, after this, want to get a couple of bowls of pow. And if you want to know a little bit about that, there you go. Um, yeah, so they're selling drugs. And you and this is the first part of the thing. And what's really great about this scene is that there is a... There's music going on in their car. It's really loud. These are like gangster, thug kids. And um, there's music in their car. And I can't understand what it's saying because I think it's in Castathan language it's great uh, or maybe a, a votan collective language uh so it was just really cool to get that feeling of wow the how human these aliens have become who knows what type of drug deal things went down but look at them they're they're almost human now they're they're changing and doing what humans do uh, listening to music selling drugs you know that's typical day for people of this cast of then. Um, so basically what happens is these guys get caught by Nolan uh, in the drug bust. And there might be a picture here, there might not. But um, yeah, it was really a drug bust. Uh, they get stopped in the middle of the road. Him and uh, Tommy and Arissa are there and they are they are sitting there waiting on these guys, and they bust them. And Nolan basically says, hey, I'm going to go to war with Daytac Tar here. And I want you to tell him that I did this to him, and that I'm going to use his own money, because they found a bunch of money in that trunk, and I am going to use it to take him down. So he's basically calling war on uh, Daytac Tar, who is basically running his business um, the way he thinks it should be run, and he's doing it very successfully. Um, the one thing about Daytac Tar during this episode is that we realize that he's not as powerful in the town as we thought he was. I thought he was a little more powerful, but uh, he's not even a council seat member. So throughout this whole episode, he is trying to one-up Nolan, and um, he is trying to earn his place here. Um, he's got enough money from being a criminal mastermind, and now he wants the power, because money is so fine, but knowledge is power, and that's something he really stresses during this episode. So this episode was a lot about Kenya, um, Kenya and Tira. Tira is Kenya's working girl, and, um, well, Tira gets into a little bit of trouble, and, uh, she gets kidnapped by these, these guys. One of them here is Miko. I think it says Miko. Oh, it'll say Miko somewhere. But um, And they get kidnapped because they were in the wrong t side of town. Um, this is one of the guys. The other guy is Ulysses. You'll remember him from... Uh, he was Bioman from uh, Episode 1. And he talks. And these two are really pretty funny characters. Um, Tira and Kenya get kidnapped uh, because Tira had done something wrong in Kenya's Need and Want Bar. And... Uh, Kenya was going to resolve the situation. Tira runs away. Kenya and Tira are now in the bad part of town. They run into Ulysses, and um, Ulysses was rounding up people who wouldn't be found. People who aren't going... If they go missing, no one's going to look for them. 
and uh, the, the door breaks open. Ulysses tries to keep the people in, and uh, Kenya and Tara try to run away. Eventually, Ulysses catch up, catches up, and uh, he takes them both um, to this drug drainage place that is inside of a of a downed ship. Uh, um, I forgot what ship it was called. I read a whole thing on it. But uh, yeah, so now they're being drained here. And uh, you basically start out the episode that way. And that's that's the start of the episode. And then you have um, Nolan and... Uh, there we go. There's the ship part of it for you. And you basically have Nolan and Amanda throughout the whole episode looking for Kenya, trying to find Kenya. And uh, they have to find her using uh, Stama and Daytactar's help. And Daytac is not very forgiving. He's not a guy who wants to give you much help, especially if you disrespect him. And apparently Amanda has disrespected him in some way. Um, yeah, this is actually the... If you wanted to pause and read that, go ahead and do that. Um, the next scene I wanted to talk about was before Kenya and uh, Tira are kidnapped. We go to a scene with um, Amanda and the council, and she's talking about how she wants this place to be run. And there we go, there it is. How she wants this place to be run. And she's like, well, if he's going up against Daytac Tar, because the council has a problem with Nolan uh, messing with Daytac. That's how they got their weapons. They used Daytac Tar to illegally get their weapons to protect this town. And Daytac Tar is furious. He breaks into the council room. He says, basically, I'm giving this town weapons. Now they don't even want to work with me. The other criminals don't want to work with me because they're scared of getting busted. Um, so it's all heat on Amanda in this episode. And this is a really Amanda and Kenya-focused episode. You get flashbacks um, all the way through it of their past and how they grew up, and I'll talk about those a bit later. But this scene, you see Rafe McCauley pull her aside, and she and he basically tells her, we don't we don't collect our guns in a necessary, necessarily legal way. Um, so yes, we use Daytac Tar, and we need to not go against these criminals. We need to let them do whatever because we are getting help from them. And this is basically the first scene with um, Rafe, where you go, he's a nice guy, he's a good father, good man, but he is he will he is willing to do whatever he needs to do to really save the town, um, make his life more comfortable. He It kind of seemed a little snakish, and he was almost threatening Amanda in this scene. Uh, things like, well, you didn't need to know. It was a need-to-know basis. And she says, well, I'm the mayor. I need to know. And he says, well, you're appointed mayor. Um, elections are coming up soon, and you might not be reelected. So that's another thing about this scene is that we're going to get to a point where it's going to be another Amanda episode, um, Elections, and we're going to find out if she gets re-elected or not. I think she will, because it's a TV show, obviously. But, um, yeah, very interesting, this scene. And Rafe McCauley kind of a little douchebag in this going on there. Um, let's see. Um, that's actually a funny thing. I'll go back down to that in a minute. Um, Rafe McCauley actually had a little bit of an emotional episode. Um, I don't know, he was kind of being a douchebag at the first part. And then the second part, he was, again, kind of being a douchebag. But but really, it's just to a point where you get that his son, Quentin, doesn't feel as loved as Luke, the dead son from episode one. And uh, so Luke had a mine in... Ser uh, 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 yeah, it doesn't say... Um, I forgot the mine's name, but um, Rafe, he didn't let it stay open. He closed it down because of the strange stuff that was in it. So Quentin got very angry at this and was going to threaten to leave. It was very childish, very immature type thing. And then Rafe McCauley calms him down and says, I love you, I love your sister, I love your brother, your mom, and um, let's go mine that together because we can. And so they go down there and they find all this strange these strange writings on the walls. Here you can catch that this cave has been older than the 1800s. Um, yeah, it was really weird. It looks like um, luminescent paint to me. 
so I don't know how it could be humans who wrote this. Um, so maybe, I don't know, maybe Votan sent scouting ships to check out the planet before coming here? I don't know. Um, it's just it's just very, very strange that these are lum it's luminescent paint. Um, they, they've they got, uh, sun look at this, this X here, I've never seen anything like that. That kind of looks Egyptian, or Egyptian-ish, but, like, there's jellyfish, there's humans, so maybe, like, some type of North Alaskan-type drawings up there. I don't know. It's, it's all very weird. So I'm very interested next episode to see what happens here. Um, because I think this is where you're gonna find, um, and there was, like, a, there was, like, a guy, like, right, right here, right? And imagine he's holding his, his two arms out. And the trinket, or the amulet, or the little treasure thing that Rafe McCauley found in Luke's room um, is on in one of his hands. And in the other one, there's like a blue or purplish one. And so we're going to find another amulet, and those two amulets are going to do something. So it's all very interesting seeing what, uh, what is going to go down with this. Um, so Amanda and Kenya both have flashbacks throughout this whole episode while they are uh, trying to save Kenya. And you get a point that, that Amanda is the older sister, Kenya is the younger sister, and what was happening was it was all jumbled, and then at the end of the episode, it really cleared up. Um, but at the beginning of the episode, you get that, or, or the flashback, Amanda is with their parent, their their mother, and she they're scavenging for anything, anything that might be of use. And Amanda scavenges this little trinket. She doesn't know what it says. She doesn't know what it means. She just knows she pulled it off a guy named Finnegan. So she calls it that Saint Finnegan. He'll protect you and all this fun stuff. Because basically, Amanda and Kenya's mother desert them. She, we don't know if she's dead. There's no confirmation of that in the episode. But um, it's just all very strange. Because Amanda says, we need to go back to save, get Kenya, our sister, my sister your daughter. And she says, no, there's no time. She'll know where to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Are you kidding me? Your mother's kind of a, you know, a jerk. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. Um, so yeah, Amanda goes, mom's dead. She said she loves you. So she basically lied to Kenya to save Kenya's feelings. And, uh, they have a nice, good emotional scene right at the end of, uh, Kenya trying to say, oh, well, you know, you could have said that anytime you could have said it whenever and just to snap back at me why didn't you and she's like you just didn't deserve that kind of pain so it was a really good scene we learned a little bit about kenya and amanda and their past i don't care about their past really um because to me they're already characters that are i'm kind of already emotionally invested in but i don't know the, the this whole thing with the saint finnegan trink trinket was uh it was all right it wasn't it wasn't great it was it was all right though it's a lot like a risk with her flashback uh last week um or her set her power you know it's just like man i would have rather seen more day tactar um so before kenny gets kidnapped she gets a little love from uh nolan here and uh you're gonna get that nolan and kenya and nolan and amanda and amanda and kenya are gonna have a tr love triangle of of all sorts because that's what basically happens in this uh, scene. Kenya, ba and this is another reason why Kenya and Amanda have a, a fight at the end, because this is one of the first scenes, and um, Nolan is is in the middle of these two sisters basically jabbing at each other, basically saying, well, you're not respectful of other women. Kenya says, well, you're just uptight, like all this sort of stuff. So we're going to get a, 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 a three-way love triangle type thing here. And this is kind of interesting, also I'll do that. Um, so Kenya and Tira have been kidnapped, and the most of the episode is them trying to escape. And Miko puts them in some sort of maze, and that's all we got. We got that they were in a maze, and um, we knew that Volge were inside the maze, hunting them. So Kenya and Tira find this air duct, and they push it in, and then they go into the air duct, and then they close it back up. The Volge guy eventually finds this out. Eventually, um, Tira makes too much noise. The Volge turns around, and he's bashing this uh, this air duct. And that was it. It just goes to black. And then, basically, you go 
back from commercial, and it's an early morning scene, and we're with Nolan and Daytech. So it's like, wait, 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 if that was nighttime, and now this is daytime, what's going on here? What's going on here? All right, weird. So that was my first clue. And then now, <laughs> basically, I'll, I'll spoil the end for you. Um, so they're in the air duct, and uh, the Volge is bashing it down, bashing it in, and uh, then they go, wait, this, this isn't right. Because when Ulysses captured Kenya and Tira, they both, she dropped her hailer, which is the little phone type thing, and she dropped her St. Finnegan trinket. And so when Kenya looks down and she sees her St. Finnegan tre tr trinket around her neck, she goes, wait, this isn't right. None of this is real. He's been pounding on the wall for nearly an hour. We just busted through within 10 seconds. So she basically realizes it's fake, wakes up from a dream-induced state, and um, she's connected to all these wires, and that's the scene back over here. So she's connected to all these wires, and Miko's there doing some drugs. She escapes... She grabs a glass uh, bottle, smashes it over Nico's head, and it kills Nico. There's a shard of glass in his neck. He pulls it out, and he just bleeds out. Ulysses finds them. He's very angry, and he's about to attack these two who had just escaped. And Ulysses gets shot by Nolan, uh, Tommy, and Arissa. Really, really upset, because I actually liked Ulysses and Miko. I thought that they could be kind of like scumbag characters, almost like in the Power Rangers with um, whoever those, uh, Skull and Crunk or whatever their names were. Um, I thought they could be those types of characters, but they've killed them both off, which is very sad. They were kind of funny. Ulysses brought them, uh, Tira and Kenya, via ice cream truck, and the music was on. So it was... <laughs> do do do. It was just great. Um, so it was an alright right episode. This was probably the weakest part of the episode, though. I want to talk about the best part of the episode for me. And it's a two-parter, because in this episode, um, Amanda and Nolan have to go help Daytar, Daytac. They have to say, Daytac, you, it's your bio, man. You know something. You need to help us. And Daytac is not happy about this. They don't treat him with a whole lot of respect. And that's a very good quote right there from Jamie Murray. Go ahead and read that. Um, they don't treat him with a lot of respect, so he says, I'm not going to help you. And then in this scene, you can see that Stama comes out uh, when Amanda runs away and basically says, I'll help you. I like Kenya. Kenya's nice. And she says all these things, and it's it's just, like, how much of it is true? Or is this another type of pull type of thing? Because she does say, well, I'm, well maybe Daytech would help you if you respected him. I think you can earn his respect by giving him a seat on the council. So Stama is really really playing the uh, playing the field here. She's manipulating everything that's going on. So Daytac and Nolan eventually... Let's go over to the final. There we go. We'll read that. Daytac and Nolan are around finding clues about where Ulysses the Bioman has gone. Ah, uh, damn it. Alright, so... Daytech is, um, it's fucking annoying. Now I've lost my spot. Um, <laughs> sorry, people. Daytech is looking for, uh, Ulysses. He goes to the Skeever, who's a very low-level, uh, cast -a -than, and he says, this is where you'll find your answers. Nolan goes in, questions him, and he, and Nolan's a very perceptive guy. Army, he's the new law keeper, very perceptive of what's been going on. So he says, oh, wait. Daytech, um, I think your boys have already got here. I think they've already roughed him up a little bit to t have him say nothing and have him tell me nothing. Or you're, you've probably threatened him in some way. Uh, and then you're going to whisper in his ear. You're going to tell him to give up the guy. And then he actually is. And then you're going to look like the hero in this. How close am I? And uh, <laughs> Daytech says, close enough. And then he goes, I wouldn't have whispered in that man's disgusting ear. It was really hilarious. It was a great scene. Daytech did a great job. And uh, it, w it was one of my favorite scenes of the episode. So basically they get information. And Daytech, before this, is, is saying, uh, he's going walking through the town with Nolan. And he's saying, I know that Castathan. I know who his illegitimate son is. Um, he's, he's the one right there by that rug. Uh, the mother knows 
Uh, the rug seller knows, but the mother's husband doesn't know. Uh, so she pretends to buy these rugs just to have him spend time with his son. I know that. And uh, it's basically knowledge is power. And that's what he really stresses throughout this episode. And we really see the rise of Daytac Tar to the council in this episode. It's a very interesting scene. And uh, at the very end, you see... Let's see, where's the handshake? There it is. Handshake. Um, so, Daytac at the end of this episode gets... I guess, hired on as the as a councilman. And uh, there's a couple cast of Than. I think there's one cast of Than, uh, uh, like three humans, including Amanda, uh, and four, including Rafe. Um, oh, let's see, there was a... Uh, I don't remember. I don't... Yeah, I think it was mostly humans and one cast of Than, I think, was was the count. Um, and one of them was a, an, a lady. Um, so Daytac enters... One guy is like, oh, wow, yeah. The cast fan guy's like, yes, Daytac, yes. Uh, so they give a handshake here. Um, he goes around. He tries to ha shake the hands of some of the humans. They don't care. One of them is hesitant, but he shakes anyway. One of them's very, you know, invi in inviting, nice. And, um, of course, he greets Amanda. And then he looks at Rafe McCauley's chair. And Rafe McCauley's, of course, isn't there at this point. Rafe McCauley is in the cave. But uh, I'm in, I'm very much looking forward to an, another council meeting between Daytac and Rafe. I can't wait to hear their arguments. Um, and Nolan is basically uh, leaning up against the door here, kind of listening in on this council meeting. And Daytac goes to the door and shuts it. Basically, is a a power move. I'm now more powerful than you. You used to have more pull than me, but now I have more pull than you. Things are changing, Nolan. So it's really, really good. Daytech has been written very, very well in this show. Um, and there you have it. Not much else to talk about. Um, I'm going to throw through these. I've talked about Daytech. Oh, well, let's talk about Stama here um, throughout this episode. She manipulates everyone. And at the end of this, Nolan um, actually says... I've been I've been looking at the wrong snake. You're the one I need to watch out for because yeah, Stama is the one giving Daytech all this power. Daytech can be the the big-headed guy that he is, but without Stama, he would not be in the same position that he would have been. All right, so there you go. Breaking down the scenes, ladies and gentlemen, that is all for me. We are going to now bring in Landon. It'll be an instantaneous transition and uh again, the sound issues are fixed, so let's get Landon's opinion, and we will be uh, seeing you for his opinions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the New Age Ucast Review Show. Here we go. We're we're going back to Defiance. This is the only show we ever review yet, <laughs> so far, right, Landon? Uh, correct. You're not reviewing anything on the side, right? Um, no. Good. <laughs> not, not, no. I'm going behind my back. Um, so basically, what happened is we've, we've already done this, uh, this podcast, this you cast, yeah. so to speak. We've already done this, and we're doing it again, and it's all Landon's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my fault, because I'm the one recording, and, um... It's all his fault, because his voice didn't... Audio. His voice didn't go over through the TV, and it kind of has to do that to be picked up at the moment. So, yeah, um, what... I, I control all the buttons and, and levers and oh man, doohickeys. So basically, you've just heard the review, and now we're getting into the portion. And I and I will, I will have said something in that review about what happened, and it was all yeah. Landon's fault and all that fun stuff. So um, what we're gonna do is. Um, Basically, just do the comments, the Twitter, the uh, talk about uh, what question of the week ratings, right. which might be in now because right. they weren't in yesterday. Um, and it's kind of good because the review is now going to have the actual inside the episode pictures that it didn't have yesterday. So it's kind of a win-win. Like it was a, and it was an unanswered prayer, so to speak. So. There is that. Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we did a whole thing and it actually was probably our best it was good show yet, in our opinion. But you know. It was a good show. Oh, it ran so smoothly, except for it one did. moment. But other than that, uh, anyway, so here we go. Landon, do you have any emails for us? Any emails? No emails. Not yet. Nothing yet. No we emails. Do tweet. Um, we, we, we do have a tweet. We got a couple comments on YouTube. And... Right. We'll do the YouTube stuff first, and we'll save the okay. tweet for later, and then we'll do the tweet and the question of the week. So, Absolutely. Let me get right into the YouTube comments for last week's video. Um, I believe... I don't know what this is in reference to, but all these worlds are us. Says, it stinks. Not sure what that means. Maybe someone else can help us out with that. I don't know what he's being. Be specific when you're insulting be us. Be more productive with your feedback. Yes. It stinks. Whether it's hardcore. negative or positive. Like, we appreciate you commenting at all. But if we have something negative about the show, then let us know. Alright, and then uh, next comment we've got. Can't believe I'm just now listening to this podcast. Very informative and laid back. You guys make a good team, too. Because of this show. I don't show, know about I, that. I feel like I'm carrying you half the time. Of course, yes, of course you do. You know, because of I'm, this I'm, show. I'm, I'm, I'm exiting in and out all the time, too. You know, I'm carrying. All Ridiculous. The time. Nonsense. Because of this show, I will now catch an episode or two of Defiance. Loved the Tremor reference, guys. Yeah, well, what is that about? Love the Tremor reference, guys. This jabroni hasn't even heard of Tremors. Don't touch me. And I've given him homework. He has to at least... I'm sure it's on Netflix. I'm sure it is. At least watch movie number one. At least. I think Reba's in the movie. Reba McIntyre. Uh... Oh, it's good. It's a good show. Maybe not the sixth movie, like he says. Shame the sixth movie never took off. Um, it was a little hard hearing you a bit. Perhaps in the future you can record over Skype. Should give you a clearer sound. Yes. On that Go note, ahead and explain that. Yeah, um, Yeah. on that note, this is the only way to do this podcast, Ucast, review show, well, as, as productive as possible, as of right now. Um, I am not a rich person. I am a very poor person. I'm on. I'm in the lowest cast of the Castathan um, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, region. He, he's uh, Ela. Yeah, I'm Ela Bandic. I'm, I'm equivalent to him. So, um... It is impossible for me to, and Skype, I believe, charges you, right? So yeah, um, we I'm we sure could do different ways of doing it. Um, yeah, it, it definitely is the Xbox Live that is making the quality of my mic not sound so good. I am using a pretty a pretty good mic. Um, it's just you know the the way we're doing it makes it not sound so good. But we will probably never upgrade until like we actually get. A dom, or like a like a, a real, you know, fan base that we can really go off of. Right. Um, but, more yeah, to that I, point. I completely agree with you, Crimson. If we were to not do it over Xbox Live and do it over, say, Google Hangouts instead, you would see yeah. choppy frame rates of my face, which is not as pretty as this internet page, and you would see choppy bits of Landon's face, which is slightly more pretty than mine. I'm going to admit that. However. Oh, thank you, sir. There would be none of this wonderful Internet Explorer stuff. We could watch videos on Google Hangouts, but that doesn't really do us a whole lot of good because that's not us that's talking. True. That's the videos. So uh, we could bottom do that. Is, a mixture of it, is, maybe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, you. I um, you. We, we could do, like, a mixture of both, but, you know, it's just, it's just kind of... It, this is the best yeah. way at the moment. Yeah, and bottom line is, is that, you know, until we actually get, like, a a, a, a committed uh, group of people watching, you know, um, with, you know, we, we need more. Um, yeah, I don't until, think... You know, like, once we get more, then we'll, we'll definitely, you know, think about upgrading. But as of right now, there's, there's no real reason to do it, because, I mean, we're still, you know, getting our points across, and, yeah, it's not as good as quality, but... You know, it does its job, and until we get more people, you know, we're probably going to stick this way. But, you know, hopefully, you know, that will change. If people haven't, um, if people haven't got on this show's bandwagon by now, it's very unlikely that people will jump on mid-season. So, yeah. 
Um, well, we for, did good on episode one. For at least this season, well, even then, it's a point of you need to make, like, a strong impact. Like, people people yeah. really don't care about this. They, they really don't care about our opinions, m for the most part. And, uh, many people who uh, have for, seen for this... People, for Go people ahead. like me, who don't understand how these things work... <laughs> uh, how how do we uh, you know how do we become you know uh, one of those those uh, you know when when they're looking up you know the shows and stuff how does how does how how can we you know receive help where it's going to uh, you know show uh, bring us more viewers and you know more people will then you know be familiar with our show like how what will help us the most? Um, what helps the most is being consistent. Um, you're gonna see a lot of these people over on this side of the screen, um, people watching it right now, um, you're gonna see them not review the last half of the season, they're gonna get bored, they're not gonna review it, and their subscribers will have to find a review somewhere. You're gonna right. see people give up on this show. I'm not gonna give up yeah. on this show because I actually like the show. Um, that's one way. Another way is just, just keep it consistent. Um, me as a my, YouTuber, my question, go ahead. My question was actually kind of rhetorical. The best way you guys can help us is leave a like. That is gonna help. Yeah, us you could leave a like, and that'll get us to the top of the thing. But we still need to be consistent because, like I said, people aren't just gonna watch the video five episodes in. Um, yeah, that's true. If if the show picks up steam over the year and it's a great show and everyone's talking about it like Walking Dead. Um, you're going to see more and more people want to watch this podcast. I understand right Absolutely. now, it's it's sci-fi. Only 2 million people a week watch it. Of those 2 million, only maybe 100,000 of them are our demographic of people who would like to listen to us. Yeah. Of those 100,000, there's maybe only about 1,000 people who will happily take an hour and a half of their time to listen to a podcast like this. And... Um, yeah. And yeah. they just have to find us. So, and it'll grow the more you stick around. So that's the kind of thing. Yeah. And with, in line with what you have to understand with YouTube is expect failure the first four oh, no, years yeah. tops. I, 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 know, I know how it works. I was being rhetorical. Um, yeah. But like I was saying, uh, there's you know, never a been... like and uh, being, being uh, you know, part of the community with us and, you know, uh, actually talking with us and uh, telling your friends about it, it, it will help us out tremendously. Yeah, the more you talk about the show, the better, um, because that that just flames. Wow, what do I think is going to happen? Put any of your um, not spoilers, of course, but any predictions, any um, any thoughts about what's going to go on. Put them in the comments on YouTube, and we'll happily read them um, and talk I, about them. Yeah, we base we're to a point where there's not very many people. We had 97 views on The Devil in the Dark, uh, episode 3 yeah. review. 97 views, 3 likes. We want that up to 10. Maybe one-tenth of every view we want, or, or out of every 10 views, we want at least one of you to like it. That way it'll go up in the in the thing. And and out of those 97 views, I would like half of you to comment. Um, great show, bad show, didn't even watch past you minute suck, 2, you stink, anything. We don't yeah. Care. Anything. I'll read anything. This guy down here says it stinks. I don't even know what that means. Um, he could be more specific, but I read his comment, so whatever. Um, so basically, stinks. yes. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Um, all right, so let's get into the final comment on this YouTube page. And um, it's basically Landon did respond back to Crimson, and, and he reminded him to answer the question of the week. And Crimson Taurus, who is one of my very loyal subscribers, very big shout out to Crimson Taurus. Um, he he says this. Crimson. There's what? A shout out. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was confused. Um, the question of the week is basically, who's your favorite character and why? What would you do with a whole day with them? Type thing. I was very vague on the uh, annotation, um, but um, says I would like to spend a day with Joshua Nolan. This guy is just straight up someone who demands who, respect and will mess you up. Go ahead. We believe his name is actually Jeb Nolan. I don't um, know his first wrong, name, nor do I care. Uh, please correct us. But yeah, yeah, let's... Like Wiki and all that stuff, it's Jeb. Well, I'm going to the oh. Wiki page in a minute, so I'll, I'll double check okay. that in a second. Remind me. 
Um, All right. So yeah, Joshua Jeb. I like Joshua better. Jeb is a weird name. Religious. Too much religion in that. Weird. <laughs> Jebabaya or something like that. Um, this guy is weird. just straight up someone who demands respect and will mess you up. I chose him because he's a freaking survivor and a law keeper. Um, someone like that you can learn a lot from. And in a post-apocalyptic world, I guess, in a post-war with aliens world, right, yeah, that is a good thing. That's someone good to be around. Um, if I didn't pick him, Absolutely. the next person would be Amanda Rosewater. The only reason is because she's hot, LOL. And I, you can see I responded, I couldn't agree more. Not so much to the Nolan stuff, but to definitely the Amanda Rosewater stuff. I mean, Dexter, amazing. Uh... uh <laughs> And now she's on this show, which she's also amazing. So, and I talked a lot. I, I'm sure I talked a little bit about that on uh, the review. Yeah. So, um, See, Landon, if good. you could spend a day with any character, what? Uh, uh, who I would you choose? Who I said our first, our first round. <laughs> um, let me think. I picked. Uh, I know Nolan was like one of my top ones, but. I ended up picking, let's see, I know you said you wouldn't have picked Zaytac, you would have picked Amanda. Right, I basically I said, gonna... um, I basically said that last week I would have said Daytac. This week, seeing how Daytac treats everybody else except his family, I'd be like, maybe not Daytac. I'd like to work for him, I wouldn't like to be friends with him. Um... If anything, I would like to um, spend the day with Amanda Rosewater, take her on a date. That'd be nice. And and then, uh, again, I agree with Crimson Taurus, uh, Nolan. You know, go play cards. Go uh, watch him in Kenya do weird erotic things. I don't know. Um, yeah. Whatever totally. Joshua Nolan does, that'd be kind of fun. Jeb. He seems like a witty guy. Sure, Jeb yeah. Nolan. <laughs> you and your conspiracies of names. Lawkeeper yep. Nolan. Um, so, so who did who would you take on a day out? Uh, uh, it's it's not a date, um, but I think I ended up saying I would want to hang out with Rupert if I remember right. Only top because hat. I'm Rupert Top Hat. Yep, Top Hat. That's his name on this yeah. podcast. <laughs> you guess. Sure. Uh, anyways, uh, Rupert, because um, of a couple of reasons, um, his way of lifestyle would be interesting to see, you know, how they live on a daily basis, as well as I'm really curious about their religion and, you know, their gods and stuff and their beliefs. Like, I think it'd be cool to learn a little bit more about them. Now, that's that's my bromance choice. If I was choosing a romance choice, um, I wouldn't pick Arissa. You know, she's she's definitely a candidate, but I'm afraid she'd just be mean. Yeah. Um, oh, I actually do remember who I picked. I picked Stama. I picked Stama, not not because Weird. You know, she is attractive, but it's because uh, I'm intimidated by her like a lot, and um, I'm just curious. Like, if if you were to take someone on a date like her, what would you inspire? You know, like, how would she react to things? Like, I'm just curious. I, I find her character very entertaining, and I think it would be fun to hang out with her for a day and to see yeah. if I still have my dignity and um, self-awareness where I don't have her controlling me. It would be interesting. Yeah, she does seem like an interesting person, but I would not want to take her on, on a date. I, I, I fear that she would either kill me or somehow, like, mesmerize me into doing things I didn't want to do. So I don't know. Maybe. Like, she's interesting, but uh, too little information at this point. Yeah, I just so. I think it would be an interesting day. Like, what would you do? Obviously, there'd be some bathing. Yeah, there'd be I'm bathing. Not entirely, I'm not entirely for that, but, you know, Crash whatever. course in manipulation. <laughs> Knitting of, of, um... Whatever it yeah. is, it, it was in the yeah. review, there was a page on what she was knitting and how, I forgot it was, it was like Ewok or Ewow or something like that. It was really strange. She was knitting an Ewok. It, yeah, it sounds <laughs> super Star Warsy, but, um, okay. 
All right, so um, we do have confirmation it's not Jeb. It is what? Joshua. It is Joshua? It is Joshua. Well, these other sites <laughs> are wrong. These other Maybe sites? Maybe Jeb is his nickname or short for Joshua. I don't know how that's Maybe, short. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I know, that'd be short. I know, like, the, the cast thing that I was going off of um, that was, you know, naming the cast and their role, they have him as Jeb Nolan. <laughs> my apologies, Crimson. You're correct. I'm wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. Rub it in my face. Um, yeah, Joshua Nolan. I call him, oh, I only call him Nolan or uh, Lawkeeper, so. Didn't yeah, I really think we all know him as Nolan by our that. heart. Um, while we're on the wiki, I want to look at the, see if the rating's in, obviously, last week. Uh, oh, it is. It got a 2.3, basically, if you round up. And, uh, <laughs> this week we got a 2.15. No rounding up, it's 1.5. That's, that's a straight in the middle. So, okay. 2.15, again, a, a lower score, because me and Landon, I don't think, watch it li watched it live. <laughs> I did not. I did not either. I was not going into this episode too thrilled but by the end of it, I was um, very, very happy. Um, yeah. What were your overall thoughts of the episode? What were your favorite scenes? And we'll, I guess we'll talk a little bit about each of them. Um, I am very curious to see, you know, like I feel like things are getting slower but faster at the same time. For example, like from episode one, you know, it was like war. And now, you know, we're at the, the sheriff part of the show. Um, right. But the fact that Nolan is, like, pretty much um, claiming his own war on Daytac on the first scene by seizing all of his weapons, that was uh, that was an interesting, bold move. Like, I understand they did it. And then, like, the response from Daytac and just back and forth throughout the episode was interesting. The episode in general, uh, I was not as entertained this week. I mean, it was... It was good. It was fine. But, like, I just, I didn't, I wasn't as hooked this week. And I don't know why. Like, I don't know. Like, it's it's almost like it's kind of just getting slower and slower. But, you know, maybe it's going to build back up. And I kind of like that. But who knows? Um, yeah, that's really about it. Besides the, uh, the complete um, character personality change of Mr. Bioman. And when you right. when you review, um, right. you can go into that. Oh, I will. <laughs> or yeah, I will, or that I was, have. That was interesting to me. Reminded me a lot of Bram Stoker's Frankenstein. Um, yeah. Um, the, basically, what could be said about the overall episode in uh, in a whole? This could be either an episode that you really liked or an episode that you really didn't like. Um, it seems like this show is going to be doing singular characters. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Tommy episode that I give, like, a, a 3 out of 10 or something like that. I would not be surprised. Like, Arissa and um, Nolan just... just I just don't know. He hasn't sold me yet. He hasn't <laughs> sold me on being a good actor, okay. and he hasn't sold me okay. being um, emotionally invested. And no, neither has Arissa. I, I, I agree completely. He hasn't sold on me either. I just like his character so far, and I think he has potential. There, There's definitely there's definite potential with with any of these people. I'm just saying, I would have rather Tommy die than Bioman and Nico. That's all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, man. No, we gotta keep Tommy for Arissa. Terrible. Um, yeah, maybe it's... I just, you know, I wasn't impressed with Tommy, and Arissa's character is kind of annoying to me. Like a teenage kid who always lashes out, doesn't want to do what Daddy says. Like, it's just really annoying. I hate those characters. Um, but I really love Daytac characters, so that's maybe why I loved this episode and not last week's episode. I thought this episode was much better than last week's. Um, mm. and, and another thing that can be said is last week we kind of had flashbacks to Arissa's um, past. Or, well, not Arissa's, but um, we get flashbacks throughout the whole episode and they're kind of jumbled up. This week we get the same thing with uh, Amanda and Kenya, and then at the end they clear it up and it and yeah so i'm i'm wondering if that's going to be a theme to this show that each episode will be a series of flashbacks and then at the end they'll kind of show what really happened and it'll be like a theme of the show cuz this yeah. episode's theme seemed like not giving up on somebody 
you care it was about. Definitely re- it was definitely revolved around them. And I'm, I'm glad that we're done with, you know, an Amanda Kenya episode. Like, we needed it, sure, but I don't know. I just, I, I know, you know, uh, I think her name's Julie Benz. Is that her name? Plays Julie her? Benz plays Amanda. Yeah, I know she's a great actress, but she just hasn't sold it to me yet in this show. Um, I know, like, you will see better from her, but I, I don't know. I, I, I do have to agree with you. She hasn't amazed me with her acting. Almost in every show I see her in, she's the same. She's just, like, yeah. a lighthearted girl who's just Pretty doing much. her best. And that's exactly what her character is. But I'm looking forward to seeing her. Like, her slapping somebody was great, as fake as it looked. That, that was like, really good. Yeah, it's just like, I'm looking for a difference. I'm looking for her to really show up and do something amazing and crazy. And the best um, the best example um, that I've seen of that is everyone knows the story of Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty by now. They've seen the new movies. Um, you wouldn't expect Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty to be crazy, Jokerish type characters, but I watched a, a TV show on Netflix where they did switch those characters up. They're like, I'm going to give it a huge twist. No one's going to see it coming. And I would like to see some of these happen. I don't like it when shows play it safe. It gets too boring. You know, the thing yeah. with Ulysses, how he how he, he just started to talk. I didn't know Byerman talked. By the way, that's Mr. Bioman for people who don't know who Ulysses is. Yeah, yeah, Ulysses is the Bioman. Um, um, like with him Mando. talking, him and Miko, they were hilarious. They made those scenes great. The ice cream yeah, truck were, made that episode. That they I, were great supporting characters, and that's why that's why we need to keep Tommy, is because that's what Arissa and Tommy are going to be. They're gonna be well, Arissa's a main character, I think. They're giving her next week's episode, and um, we'll see if that impresses me or not. I'm a big fan yeah. of Daytech. I don't think Daytech's going to be involved in Arissa torturing somebody next episode and i don't know so next week is going to re- be a real test for me on this show um i'm i'm still going to review it but arissa needs to step it up i need to see something that i'm going to like from arissa arissa has to be somebody that you pity somebody that you want to like not someone that you go oh she's annoying so she has to sell me on that. Someone that she need, yeah, we need to be able to have that feeling that we need to root for her. Like we're she kind needs of rooting to have... for Nolan right now. Exactly. And your way, you're kind of rooting for Date Tech. In a way, I think they're all gonna, you know, there's gonna be a bigger picture to the whole thing. But I don't know. I'm not really rooting for anyone to be honest. Um, not not no. There's there's no one I'm really rooting for. They're all kind of just the same to me. Like I. I like Nolan, I like Daytac, you know, I like I like Rafe, you know, I know you don't like Rafe, um, but there's, like, no one that really catches me to the show. Speaking about Rafe, there was a, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna hurry and go back to it, but there was a, uh, an extra of the Rafe and, um, Quentin, uh, little cave diving experience. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read that here. Um, because you were semi-correct that that cave had been there for a while. And it was there since the 1800s. Um, basically, when we did the first part of this, I had guessed that... That, um... Uh, Luke, was it? I think it was Luke. Luke didn't know yeah, how Luke. to read. So Birch, who was a bad guy, friend of the old mayor lady, um, who was a bad guy with the cool stunner shade glasses... <laughs> Um, my theory was that Luke didn't know how to read, so Birch painted <laughs> pictures of what he that needed is... to do. But now we get the sense that, let's see, I'm seeing oh fish, I'm seeing triangles and people. It doesn't look human to me. No, yeah, and that's but... why I was laughing at your theory the first time you mentioned it to me, because I actually did pay attention to it. And I, I don't know. You really thought out of the box on that one. My theory yeah. is, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're they're not left by by uh, you know humans. Um, and obviously, if you look at the one holding the gold medallion thing in the painting, he is definitely not human, or she, whatever it is, is definitely not human. Um, I, I'm excited to see. You know, like that. There's more mystery. Going I believe. On. 
I believe you said Morlocks. I believe you said people who are living in the cave and they always run and hide in old no, St. Louis. No, I said that it is whenever. possible. Right, I said it is possible that there could be uh, humans living underground in the caves and stuff at, at one time, oh, not now, and that yeah. they could have been living in old St. Louis underground. Like, I could have seen that. That would have been sweet. It, like, reminds me of something, like, you know, out of, like, a Fallout game or... Uh, I don't know, like, there's a bunch of books, like, I've read on that kind of stuff. Um, like, I could easily see that happening. But at the same time, I, they don't look like human paintings or anything. And they're, right. they're pretty they're pretty well-preserved, if they're, especially if they're from the 1800s. Let me read I mean, this. The, the, colors says, are, the colors are pretty bright and stuff. Yeah, and, they're really luminescent. Let me read this for you. It says, did you catch the lamp, pickaxe, and spectacles in this scene? or the human skeletal remains, people have discovered this cave long ago, at least dating back to the 1800s, and the cave paintings look much, much older than that. So now my new theory is that aliens have been here before, and these this is where they hid their secrets. I, I, I would guess. I don't know. I don't think any caveman or any... Um, 1800s or before that would make a painting such as this with amulets yeah. and crazy. So I can I can I, don't I can agree with you that aliens you know may have been there before. Also, um, it's the, luminescent paint that just does. It's weird. Maybe okay. So that's your theory. I'm gonna do it a little bit different. Aliens have been there before, but they're not any of the aliens we've seen yet or that we know of. I, that could they're completely be completely different, possible. and they're gonna they're gonna come around sometime, and things are gonna go down. Yeah, I'm very I'm very very interested in what's gonna happen with Rafe McCauley. Very uh, intriguing. Hopefully, it happens next episode. That way, next episode won't be a total Arissa torturing people affair, because that I'm not interested in that. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, any, any final thoughts on the episode? Any... Uh, uh, no. We did miss our tweet of the week, though. Go ahead and do the tweet of the week. Yeah, we forgot about that. Sorry about that, tweeters out there. Um, tweet of the week is actually from, uh, our previous tweet of the week. Uh, his name is... Isn't it Sputnik? <laughs> Sputnik Bester. Yep, Sputnik Bester tweeted in. Um, it's kind of similar to our question of the week, actually. Um, I believe I've already he answered. Said, yeah, he said if you could be with any girl uh, from the show, who would you choose and why? Now, I'm going to go more into that. We're not just going to pick a girl. We're going to say any character. You guys have already heard that. Sputnik, thank you for you know tweeting in. Uh, hopefully, we've given you our our choices and why. Um, right. And, you know, definitely tweet in more guys and for a chance you know to be on the show and we can discuss you and to get a shout out or just leave a comment in the box below. That's that's easy too. To be fair, but you can, to the yeah. to any woman who might be listening to this at this point, if I were a girl and I were to choose any guy, it'd most likely be Nolan. There you go. I would choose Mac. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know. He has, a, he has a thing going on. I don't know. Uh, speaking of Mac, did you want to do your lore of the week with the... Uh, oh, sensor? yeah. All right. Uh, real real uh, fast and easy to, uh, to remember. Our lore of the week, our first attempt, um, I didn't do so hot. Um but basically, I feel a lot more comfortable uh, with the subject. I chose the sense off because I couldn't think of anything that really could tie in with the episode. So I just picked something random, and I I chose the race of the sense offs, which are, and I hate you know I hate to use it for the comparison, but let's be honest. When we all see them, we think Wookie. Um, That's they what are I thought. the Wookie race. Yeah, we they are the Wookie race. Um, they're known to be very patient because. They're known to have uh, twice as long life cycles than any other race, um, which, you know, gives them a patient uh, trait and quality. But at the same time, they're also known to be very strong, and they're, they're, they're known to be very good bodyguards. And um, the Cassistans actually use them for slaves. 
and mainly because they're kind of dumb in some ways. Um, they basically don't question their leader at all, like, regardless. Like, it's not out of loyalty, it's just out of uh, more, like, gullibleness in a way. Um, so more not like, uh, you know, I need you to go kill this guy. Okay, more like, did you know this guy is actually really red? They'd be like, really? No way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's them. And they, they're they very, uh, they do, I guess they supposedly, they do well with uh, nature on Earth, um, which is why we saw that one, I um, can't remember his name. I'm sure we'll see more of him. He's the uh, the one doggy that sense. had the dog. Yeah, yeah it's doggy not, sense. It's not off. Mac. There's there's three different sense offs we've seen. There's a uh, Mac, which is uh, Rafe's bodyguard. There's whoever who knows what his name is, who is uh, Daytax guard. Like we we've seen nothing right. on him besides we've him seen in him the once. background. And uh, then there's uh, I can't remember his name. He's unimportant right now, but basically his character role is dog watcher, uh, smuggler, something. Um, right. And I'm sure we'll see more of him. Let me let me hear him pull up his name. There is a part of this uh, while you're pulling it up. There there is a um, something on the Sensoth on the sci-fi uh, thing, and I've had it up here. It says to this day, many Sensoth can be found in the employ of wealthy Castathan families. A long, dark history from which the Sensoths has not been able to uh, escape. Still, in later centuries, Sensoths began to view their employers, Castathan or not, as family, and protected them with equal passion. Yeah, his name is Rega. So, Rega. Alright, Rega the doggy. I believe Sensoth. that's how you pronounce it. R-A-I-G-A. I'm going to just say Rega. Rega or Rage, probably. A at the end? Oh, G-A. oh, okay. I, thought, I said you said G E, but um, G A, yeah, yeah, probably Raga, or Raja, or something. I don't know. Raiga. <laughs> now you probably didn't see this. Um, we're wrapping up talking about the fines here, but some of the commercials on Sci Fi feature a new show called Sinbad. Have you heard about this? I've heard of Sinbad. I have not heard of this show. No. Are, are, do you want? Are we kind of looking to do in this one too? Um, no, because I don't think it's going to be a good show. But guess who's in it? Paris Hilton. Sinbad is a almost a Middle Eastern Indian type Saeed? show. Saeed. Damn it, I knew he no. would get it. Saeed. If it's Saeed, it's not going to be terrible. Well, he's the main bad guy. It, he, I'm sure, will oh. do good. I'm going to watch the pilot of it, but I, I really don't think it'll be anything know, more than guys, a season. You guys might get another show. Hooray! No, you won't. I'm not. I'm not covering Sinbad. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch Saeed. That's all. All right. Just... All right. And Saeed is. Uh, he's from Lost. If you he's from Lost. Lost. If people watch this yeah. show, I'm sure they've seen Lost. Um. So yeah, there you go. There's our lore of the week, ladies and gentlemen. If you want any like suggestions on what you want to learn about next, whether it be the Castathan, yeah. the Arathians, the... Indigenes, Liberta. Let's go through all of them. Volge, Gulani, Biomen, Hellbugs. You could do technology, and we'll go Not into even, that. Yeah, just technology even. Uh, you know, the planet itself, you know, what's different? Why Earth? Leave suggestions that will help a lot. Um, it won't necessarily mean I'll pick it, just because usually I do the lore segment, uh, like, in my notes before we do our recording, because uh, I try to tie in the lore with whatever happened in the show. To give us a little right. bit more background, like last week I did Hellbugs. Um, this week there wasn't really anything um, that was, you know, worthy of talking about. But, um, yeah, leave suggestions, you know, for weeks like this week where I can, you know, wing it. So. All right. So there you go. I reviewed the show, and now we've gotten Landon's input on the episode. I think that's a show. Yeah, that's, really, that's quick, easy. Uh, you know, I know you're going to take over and talk about, you know, what happened in the show. Uh, you guys always can, you know, leave comments and things you like about the show, things you didn't like about the show on the comment board underneath the, uh, I guess the video you're watching right now. Or you can find us at Twitter on TN, uh, yeah, no, no, that's our email. Uh, Twitter is Blitzkrieg Omega. Um, on, that's on Twitter. You can tweet me. We don't have a, an official Twitter for 
the Defiance Show. But as of an email, we do have an official email. It is tna.defiance at hotmail.com. You can always send in an email, get a shout out, leave you guys' comments, help us out, please. You know, it, it, it's right there. Just press like. It's not hard. Right there. It will help us a ton. It will bring us more viewers. You know, we're, we're not necessarily doing this show for, for you know, the the fame and stuff. We're doing it for, you know, the community. We want... We want, you know, a community base so that we can, you know, discuss the show and, you know, share our passions about it and you know, just have fun with it. Uh, but, you know, that's only going to happen if it's uh, done by you guys. You know, we can only do so much. So, you know, really, you know, if you guys really want to see this, you know, keep on continuing. Like, we will continue it, but improving, I guess, is the correct word. Help us out. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Tweet us. Email us. Uh, tell us we suck. We don't care. We just, you know, we'll we'll try to improve. Um, that's all I got. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm Absolutely. Lit. Um, real quick at the end. Um, out of ten, what would you give the episode? I believe I gave it a six point five. I think you just said six, and I gave it an eight. I thought it was a really was solid kind of, episode. I was harsh. Six point five. Six point five, and I gave it an eight. So I'll do the calculations. But I think that's um, seven point three. Uh, um, 7. something. 2, Hold on, 50. let me bring out my calculator. 7. Oh, 50, I, I just deleted your notes. Oh well, show's over. <laughs> um, yeah, I gave it an eight. I thought it was super solid. So um, let's see here: six point five plus eight divided by two. Sorry about the simple math. That's a ten point five. Is that right? No. You're doing it wrong. I did it wrong. Okay. It's it's seven. It's let's see, eight. 6. It would 5. be yeah, it's, it's, sixty-five it's like seven plus point, eighty like seven point divided by two out of a hundred. That doesn't make, that. Oh, out, oh, oh, yeah. It's a ten out of yeah, and then you divide that by yeah, yeah, two hundred. Obviously, we're not good at math. Don't make fun of us. Don't judge us. I don't get it. I how does that not work? That should make sense. Um, basically, uh, let's see. Well, we'll just go point five up. You go seven. I go seven five. You go That's seven fine. five, and I go. Or you you can you so can it'd go. be a seven point seven five out of ten. There we go. Sure. That's sure. that's the official rating for us. At seven least. point three. Seven point seven five out of ten. Three. We can't do math. Um, next week we do have the serpent's egg. I, th I was excited. I was excited. I thought it was going to be Stama. It appears to be Arissa. Um, so, yeah, again, and to the point that Landon was trying to make, we need people to be more involved. And you know what? Write a comment. It's definitely going to be heard because there's only there was only two people who commented last week. We might as well be reading them all as if they were emails. So that's the easiest way to get heard uh, if you have an opinion or if you have a criticization of the show. If you don't like the show... Post a comment, please, and tell us why, and I'll try to mm, yep. tell you why you're kind of incorrect, because it is an okay show. It's better than most stuff out there. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I am Derek D. Ginger King. With me is I am Landon. Butch Creek Omega. Yes, and um, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks, guys. Yeah.